Okay, before we begin, I just have to put this disclaimer out. It feels like we have to put a disclaimer for everything these days. I'm going to be talking about Kangana Ranaut's latest film, but this video is not about her social media personality, what she is off screen, what she's like a person in real life. I have no idea. We're going to be talking about the film, her work as an actor, as an artist. I'm going to try to look at her profession and not her personal life. Yeah, just putting it out there. Now we can begin. So if you love movies, I know I do. And I do this particular thing that I make a lot of lists about films that I wish I can see someday. I want these films to get made someday. It could be the genre of the films. It could be about a director-actor combination that I'd like to see, an actor-actor combination that I want to see. For example, someday I want to see a Batman film directed by Quentin Tarantino. Doesn't matter if it's never going to happen. Someday I want to see Rajni and Kamal in a film which is kind of like Heat, which had Robert De Niro and Al Pacino on opposite sides. And one thing that I really, really wanted to see someday happen in our industry is a hardcore action film with a female protagonist. I want to see a woman kicking the shit out of a hundred men like our men usually do. And never, never did I imagine that the one person to answer my prayers to fulfill my wishes would be Kangana Ranaut. So recently I watched the trailer of this uh, latest Kangana Ranaut movie called Thakad. It just dropped one or two days back and the trailer looks Seriously, the trailer looks insane. For an action film, it looks like something that I've never seen, in, at least in our country. And there are three things mainly that really stood out for me. Why I think this film is going to be a game changer for action films in this country. And the first thing is the action choreography. Take any great Hollywood action film franchise, Mission Impossible or the James Bond series or the John Wick series or even our own Asian films like our Thai films like Ong Bak and also all the old Jackie Chan films in which there'll be a camera placed and in a single take there'll be Jackie Chan trying to hit people or trying to escape from anyone who's trying to hit him, right? And the reason why these action sequences and the films really work is because Firstly, there's like a strong reasoning for that action scene to exist. There is a hero, there is this character who has this objective, a mission that he has to pull off. He has to either catch someone or retrieve something from someone or save someone. So that is the emotional core of an action sequence. And once you have that core, next you have to stage that action sequence and have a certain flow. Where the scene is going to take place determines how the action is going to flow. For example, if you take the opening sequence of Casino Royale, James Bond is chasing someone and he has to go through so many different locations and there is one particular sequence on a crane where they have to fight each other out. Because of that location, because of the crane, you know the rules of the scene. You know what James Bond can do, cannot do, what his obstacles are going to be. And every single time he slips or falls or hits someone, whatever it is, you feel that tension, you feel that thrill, you feel that impact of every punch, you feel your heart drop when he falls. On paper, it sounds absolutely unbelievable. You know a guy can't do this. But when you watch it on screen, the way it's shot, the way it stays, the way it's choreographed, it is so believable it is so tense it is so thrilling because there is so much effort taken by the director the writer and the action choreographers to plan this entire sequence but here we make action films and action scenes just for the sake of it because it has to satisfy one particular audience what kind of films do we make hero panti 2 like who is this guy why is he doing so many balties in the air why is he jumping off walls when the villain is like two kilometers away and why is he so invincible he literally has a bomb burst in his hands and all that happens to him is that his clothes get torn. This can work in a Vadivale scene but not with Tiger Shroff in a legit action film. I don't know if he's human or he's supposed to be a superhero but he looks like he belongs to this universe but the rules of the universe don't apply to him. Like f physics, f gravity and it might seem like I'm just pointing out mistakes for the sake of it but think about it when I watch such a scene such an entire film on the big screen what is the reason for me to be emotionally invested or have any kind of investment in this character when nothing happens to him bullets can't touch him knives or bombs can't kill him it is just not fun it, this is not entertainment. If the hero doesn't get hurt, if he doesn't have any hurdles or obstacles to cross, it just keeps decreasing our interest level. And that's what I found really interesting in the trailer of Dhakar. There's a visible effort taken to give us something different in terms of action sequences, at least. Like there is a sequence with a katana sword. There are hand-to-hand -hand combat sequences. Every time Kangana punches someone or when she gets punched or when she jumps on top of someone, tries to break someone's hand, there is a sense of realism which 
which gives you a sense of tension at least that's what i'm seeing until now and i was reading about this film and i read that the producers they were really keen they were really insistent that they had to hire people from other industries to make sure that the action is high intensity they wanted to hire action choreographers and directors from us korea canada south africa so they've collaborated with a lot of different teams to deliver these action set pieces and i really really hope they pull it off the second thing that really stood out for me is the cinematography one more thing that's wrong with our action films is that all of them look the same depending upon which decade they belong to in terms of treatment in terms of the color tone the color grading currently they are in this mad max kind of a theme which ev where everything looks brown and raw and grungy you can see it in kgf2 even though i really really love kgf2 the color treatment really works for that film every film does not have to look the same like seriously where is your vision why is there no attempt to make something look different which is why this trailer looks really different it's uh, mostly shot in the dark which i have not seen with our action films in the past there's a strong use of neon you have a color play between blue and red and there's one sequence with a strong orange background looks like there's a lot of fire in the background that looks really insane there's also a separate black and white sequence i think that's a flashback sequence so overall it looks like a violent gory comic book come to life like a stylized graphic novel coming to life on screen so the director of this film who is uh, rajneesh rezi ghai that's his name uh, i think he's worked on a lot of ad films in the past he seems to have a strong visual direction in mind and what makes it even better is that he's collaborated with this japanese french cinematographer his name is tetsuo nagata he's worked in a lot of international films and uh, i'm not saying that just because you hire an international cinematographer or work with international teams your film becomes amazing of course it has to be backed up with really strong writing a strong story but the important thing here is that you have to be open to collaboration when you collaborate with people from other states other countries other industries they bring in their own fresh perspective or new lens of looking at the same thing and the third and very very obvious reason why this trailer really worked for me is uh, kangana ranaut once again like i said in the beginning even though my political opinions or uh, my political ideologies whatever it is is very very widely different from uh, the things that kangana believes in she's been in the news for the past 2 3 years for all the wrong reasons but no matter what you think of her, no matter what the world thinks of her no matter what things she's doing in her personal life off screen whatever she's doing you can't deny one thing that she is a great actor like i've been following her work right from her first film and i watched that film in the theaters which was gangster but there was so much rawness there was so much vulnerability and she carried on that same kind of energy that same kind of persona to a lot of other films like she took it to a whole new level in fashion and then there's this other entirely different style an entirely different kind of persona with queen like seriously from any industry ask yourself how many other actors would be able to pull off a role like queen like what kangana did with queen or even in tanu vej manu or tanu vej manu returns in which she played two completely different kanganas and i think it's a really great move for the makers to cast kangana because unfortunately in this country most filmmakers most producers directors they don't feel they can make a film with a female protagonist because Because they feel that such films are not bankable. Mostly, they make these low-budget films or medium-budget films, but no one attempts to make these. big budget mythological films i read this book called the palace of illusions it's the story of the mahabharat from draupadi's perspective and i personally think that that could make a really really cool action film i don't know if it's getting adapted or not but the thing is there is a complete lack of intention when it comes to making these films with female protagonists there are few exceptions like vidya balan for example started it and uh, she's acted in so many solo heroine films and she's been very very successful with it. in the recent past we've seen tapsi we've seen deepika yes there are certain films being made but there are very 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 few in number and we've definitely not seen many action films because there is a fear that the audience won't accept it audience won't come to watch it or something like that and that's why i said it's really smart of the makers to cast kangana in this film because whatever said and done whether you like her or not 
Kangana grabs attention. She brings audiences to theaters. She's a bankable star. And apart from the bankability, she has great screen presence. She can really pull it off as an action star. When this film hits the theaters, hopefully, and I really, really hope it does, that it changes a lot of things, not just for the way we look at action films in this country, but also how we're just ignoring an entire gender when it comes to protagonists on screen. Anyways, like I said before, the trailer looks great. It looks fantastic. I'm really excited for the film. But if there is not strong writing involved, if there is not a good enough screenplay to back up these action sequences, then it's going to fall flat on its face. But let's hope that doesn't happen. I really hope this film works and it changes a lot of things. Check out the trailer. Tell me if I'm overreacting, over exaggerating, or whether you agree with me, disagree with me, whatever it is, tell me in the comments. If you like this video, hit like so that more people can get to see it. Yep, that's it for this video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.